In this part, we will have a look at the GUI editor itself. We will learn how to import our model, add slides, define colors, and enrich our scene with hotspots. But first, let's have a look at the different panels. After entering the GUI editor, we see three separate areas. The viewport, a timeline panel at the bottom, and a sidebar on the left. The viewport in the middle takes up the most space of our screen. This panel represents our stage. Here we see the content of the current slide. This could be a 3D model or any other asset that was uploaded to the media library. On the left, there is the sidebar that lets you set all the properties for the current slide and at the bottom is the timeline showing a list of all the slides in your presentation. Viewport. First of all, let's bring our model into the scene so we have something to work with. In the sidebar, open up the model section and click on select. Now choose a model from the media library and a moment later you will see it in the viewport. Like in presentation mode, you can orbit around your model by pressing the left mouse button. Click the right mouse button to move your focus point. This is a virtual point the camera is moving around. Use the mouse wheel or two fingers on the touchpad to zoom in or out. Sidebar. Now we're going to have a closer look at the sidebar. At the top, there's a button that leads us back to the project page. This way you can go back and forth. A little hint. Clicking on it with the middle mouse button will open up the platform in a new tab. Here you can go to the media library and for instance replace your asset with a newer version of it. Now just close the second tab and reload your editor. This way you can save time navigating on one page. Below the project name you will see a row with four little icons. The first one lets you upload a thumbnail image for your Goofy project. That way your project is easier to recognize in the Goofy project view, especially if you have a lot of projects. With the help of the screen capture tool you can simply make a snapshot of the 3D view and upload it as an icon. On Windows search for snip paste or snipping tool. The rectangle with a plus in it adds in a new empty slide. Here you can start from scratch and import a different model for instance. All the values for the slide will be set to the default settings. The two rectangles with the plus icon duplicate the current GUI. In this case, all the settings are copied to the new slide. You may also find this icon down in the timeline below. The last item in line is the play button. Clicking it will open up a new window showing a preview of your presentation. This is similar to the view draft button that we know from previous tutorials. Mini timeline. On the left is a small column that represents a miniature timeline. A black arrow and a yellow text indicate the current slide. Changing slides here will change them in the bottom timeline as well. The main menu contains unfoldable tabs. Some of them have a help icon on them with further information on how to use them. Model. In the Model tab you can choose a 3D model you want to include into the active slide. When you press the Select button a new panel appears where you can either choose a model from your media library or directly upload a new one. As soon as the model is loaded, it will be visible in the viewport. Now we also see some additional options on the model menu. In case your model has animations, you will get an entry for each animation and the option to play, stop or pause it. Using the pause app function makes it possible to divide your animation into smaller parts or even play it backwards. The value ranges from 0, which is the start of your animation, to 1, being the end. If your model contains additional custom properties, they are displayed below. Adding custom properties will be described in the advanced section. In our example, we can hide or show different parts of the model with the help of the visibility custom property, scene and camera. Now let's close the model section and head over to Scene and Camera. 
Here you can give your slide a label so it's easy to find it in the timeline. This helps organize big projects with many slides. If you check the Uses Bookmark option, the label you entered above will be shown as an entry in the table of contents. Next, we can set the duration of a slide. Entering a higher duration value will show the current slide longer in the final presentation. That's useful in cases where there is a lot of text and you might want to give your audience some more time to read it. As a visual feedback, entering values above 5 seconds will also increase the width of the slide in the timeline. The Save button in the perspective area will store the current camera position for your slide. This is one of the core functions of the GUVI editor and it will become obvious if you change between slides, having different saved camera positions. The Auto Rotate feature is a little gimmick, giving you a slow turntable rotation that can run in the background while you're talking to your audience. Lightning and Colors The Lightning and Colors section allows you to define an environment for your model. You can see how it affects the reflection and lightning when you switch between different environments. The brightness controls the global illumination. Setting it to zero will end up in a total black model, even if the camera light is on. Now that we speak about it, the camera light is a directional light attached to your camera. With it, you will get nice highlights and surface imperfections are much stronger than just using an environment light. The next two colors define your background, one for the inner, the other for the outer area. They will have no effect on the lighting of your model. The ambient color, on the other hand, does influence the visual result. Use it to generate some contrast or tint the ambient color. 2D text and media. As the name implies, here we can add our 2D text, images, videos or links. Click on the Edit button to enter the 2D edit mode. Next, you can choose one of the templates depending on where you want your text to be. Clicking in the text area lets you enter your text, like you know it from any other writing application. Select your text and you can choose a font, set the size of the text and change the line spacing. The typical functions like bold, italic, underline, as well as text and background color are on board as well. The background color of the panel is by default transparent. To create a colored one, just click on the bucket and move the alpha slider to the right. Now you can choose a color for your sidebar. If you notice the white border area inside, that's just visible in edit mode to indicate the writable area. When leaving the edit mode, that white border will disappear. The last two buttons let you include images and videos, either from the media library or via link. Click the image icon to select an image from your media library. To include a video, let's head over to YouTube and copy a link of a video you want to include. Now back in the editor, just click on the video icon and copy the link in here. Hotspots Hotspots can be used as an interactive annotation in a scene, to navigate through your GUVI or jump to an external page. To add a hotspot, press the plus button. Now you will see a little icon with an eye on it. This icon sits on the part of your 3D model that was in focus when you clicked the button. If there is no geometry in focus, the icon is placed in front of your camera. If you hover over the icon, you will see three arrows appear. Grabbing those arrows, you can move the icon in the X, Y or Z direction. You can also just drag the icon itself and it will snap onto the geometry underneath. Using the hotspot as a simple annotation is the default option. Just click on the I and start typing. If you want the hotspot to act as a navigation icon, 
you can simply choose a scene from your presentation to jump to. Naming your scenes makes sense here. Play the GUI and see if it works like you want it. In the end, you can also use the hotspots to lead your audience to a different website. Just choose the option to redirect to a URL and enter a URL. Now we know the basics of how to define different properties for our slide. Next, we will learn about the timeline and create our first GUI.